Julie, for those who can't see her, was over there. You still can't see her, but she was over there, sitting on a chair, asleep. <laughs> Until you said that. Until I said good morning. <laughs> I, 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 I confused some other people earlier because I was singing about every day being a Starbucks day, so and they wouldn't join in when I asked them to join not? in. No, and I'm not going to sing it now because although I could get everyone else to sing it, couldn't I? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Should I do this? Yeah. yeah. Are you ready for this, ladies and gentlemen? So it's good morning, good morning, every day's a Starbucks day, good morning, good morning to you. You can do that, can't you? Yeah. Are you ready? <laughs> good morning, good morning, every day's a Starbucks day, good morning, good morning to you and you and you and you. And no, Starbucks do not give me free coffee, <laughs> neither the Costas, neither the Nero's, none of them give me free coffee, but maybe after they see this, we'll all get a free coffee. When you go viral, you'll be yeah, happy. yeah. We do not, of course, as church, condone advertising for any company at all. It's wonderful to be here. Um, everything's gone wrong this morning. I didn't bring the things I was supposed to bring. I brought things I wasn't supposed to bring. And just so that you all know, if you've got those sheets with the words on, you don't need to use them today because I'm doing a slightly different service. So you can put them down and you don't need to read them. Just do everything from the screen and if it all goes horribly wrong, well, we'll go down the pub and have a drink. And you can join us. 
<laughs> okay, where am I today? Um, uh, we all are aware of the COVID-19 regulations. We are also all aware that things are changing um, almost daily, it seems. But of course, as church, we have a few rules that we'd just like you to, uh, to abide by wherever possible. Uh, the first, of course, is if you haven't already done it, is to sanitise your hands when you enter, when you leave. Um, if you're doing other things where you need to move around, then sanitise your hands at every opportunity. Uh, we recommend uh, that you wear face coverings throughout the service, unless, of course, you have a reason to be exempt for them. Um, we do still, I'm hoping, have disposable masks outside. Uh, someone, I'm sure, will tell me if we don't, so please feel free to make use of them. Um, we also ask you to remember to socially distance wherever possible. Um, apart from those people in your immediate family group, unless, of course, Mike Rita decides she doesn't want to sit with you, in which case you need to move. Um, if you are wearing a face covering during communion, as always, I will bring communion to you. We are only receiving in one kind, but when I bring it to you, please maintain and keep your face mask on uh, until I've given you the host, and then when I walk away, you can, you can receive the host, if that's OK. Uh, you don't need to stand at any point other than when I tell you to stand and once you've got your host you can sit down once you've consumed it as well. Uh, we are still operating a one-way system so we do ask you to come in through the main door and exit through the Setzberger chapel door as well. Um, and basically uh, just a, a thank you to say that by adhering to these rules actually we're keeping one another safe and we're keeping other people safe and that's important and that's what we're called to do. We are of course all the body of Christ here on the earth. So, welcome to our shared communion service today, a day when we come together in new ways of being church, when we learn together, when we prepare together, and when we're together whilst also being apart, because not all of us are yet able or willing to come to church, and yet we still meet both physically and sacramentally and spiritually in a spiritual communion one which symbolises a love and a desire for Jesus to come into our hearts. Though we are scattered, we recognise Jesus' presence here with us. And in doing so, we light a candle. A candle to remind us that Jesus is the light of the world, who came to bring light to a dark world. So to each of you, I offer grace, mercy and peace from God our Father. And may the Lord Jesus Christ be always with you. And also We take a moment's silence as we reflect upon the day. Loving God, we have come to worship you and so we pray together. Help us to pray to you in faith, to sing your praise with gratitude, and to listen to your word with eagerness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I don't know about you, but I know that sometimes during the week I just get things a little bit wrong. I eat too much at barbecues. I drive a little bit too fast. I moan about the person in the queue in front of me because they're taking too long to pay for their two items because they didn't get their money out of their purse or their wallet because we wouldn't want to make it look like it was just women. And the thing is, sometimes we do get things wrong. And when we get things wrong, we have to say sorry because in getting things wrong, we, build, we, we break a relationship with other people and with God. And so when we come together, we say sorry for the times we've got things wrong to rebuild those relationships and to put us right with one another and to God. Jesus, of course, said, before you offer your gift, go and be reconciled. Today, as sisters and brothers in God's family, we come together to ask our Father's forgiveness, as we say. Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We know we are not worthy to be called your children, and so we turn to you again. Have mercy on us, we ask. Bring us back to yourself, as those who once were dead, but now have life through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and strengthen you from all your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So, as forgiven people, we listen to our first song. Church is different. It's different to what it's been for a very, very long time. But when we gather here with Jesus, we gather with the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Some of you may have think, but I made a mistake with the candles. Because they're not lit. But I didn't. I wanted to light the candles to signify the presence of the Holy Trinity. Father, Son and Holy Spirit.
And so we bow our heads to reflect on the love Jesus has for us as we hear the special, special prayer for today. Almighty God, whose only Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence, give us pure hearts and steadfast wills to worship you in spirit and truth through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and raised with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Our first Bible reading is from Romans chapter 14, verses 1 to 12. Welcome those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarrelling over opinions. Some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who abstain, and those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day observe it in honour of the Lord, and those who eat, eat in honour of the Lord, since they give thanks to God, while those who abstain, abstain in honour of the Lord and give thanks to God. We don't, do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or you, why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then. Each of us will be accountable to God. Lord of wisdom and truth, we thank you for your word. Brothers and sisters, I invite you to stand for the gospel. Gospel this morning is taken from Matthew chapter 18. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sinned against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. Therefore the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him ten thousand bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. At this, the servant fell to his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay you back everything. The servant's master took pity on him and cancelled the debt and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told the master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I cancelled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In his, his anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all the debt he owed. 
This is how my Heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brothers or sisters from your heart. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Cross. Please to be seated for our Gospel song. Shine! 
that just perfectly timed. Julie, come here, let's pray for you before you talk to us. <laughs> yeah. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for all our ministries, but we thank you particularly today, Julie. And we pray, Lord, that as she speaks, she will speak into our hearts those things that we need to hear. And we pray, Lord, that she will speak the word of God Almighty, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So, from this morning's Gospel reading from Matthew, Jesus teaches us about forgiveness through the parable of the unmerciful servant. Forgiveness can be difficult to give when we've been harmed in some way and are bearing a grudge. It can also be difficult to receive, as we may feel we don't deserve forgiveness. In fact, do we rate the sins of others on the same scale as our own sins? Or do we just try and justify our own wrongdoings? Either way, we need to give and accept forgiveness as it's central to our faith. We have a loving God whose grace we have received, sorry, we have a loving God by whose grace we have received forgiveness and we are called to pass this on and forgive others. But this is not as simple as it sounds if we are to truly to forgive. The dictionary definition of forgiveness is this, to stop feeling angry with someone who has done something to harm, annoy or upset you, or to stop feeling angry with yourself, which I thought was actually quite interesting because it's very often easier to forgive others than to forgive ourselves, but that's probably a whole different talk for another day. Forgiveness can feel a step too far when we've been hurt or annoyed. But the anger that we hold on to will damage our relationship with God. And after all, it's not our place to judge. We all sin in some way every day. Well, I know I do, at least. And so I am thankful that we can come to God to ask for and to receive forgiveness. So back to this passage, Peter asked Jesus, How often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Seven times? But Jesus answers, not seven times, but 77 times. And in some translations of the Bible, it's quoted as 70 times seven. So that's just a mere 490 times. But the point is, the numbers are irrelevant. Jesus is not inviting us to keep record of sins and offences against us. Rather, he's setting a standard that makes record-keeping impractical. God's forgiveness and grace shown to us are immeasurable, and in in fact beyond our understanding, and therefore we too must forgive unconditionally. For if we're keeping records, are we truly forgiving, or just carrying out a tick box exercise? This is not a lesson in maths or record-keeping, but rather a lesson in showing grace and love. And it's the same in this parable. When the first servant is called to his master, he owes far more than he could ever repay in his lifetime. And so the master orders that the servant, his wife and his children, all be sold off to pay the debt. The servant pleads with the master, Lord, have patience with me and I will repay you. Again, the amount is irrelevant and the master grants forgiveness of the full debt. But in saying that we should readily forgive, is Jesus asking us to put ourselves at the mercy of the uncaring or unrepentant sinner? Not at all. Earlier in the chapter, Jesus shows us how our unrepentant brothers and sisters will be dealt with. This parable is to show us how forgiveness is shown to the repentant sinner. And of course, at this point, all would be well. Great parable about compassion, where they could all live happily ever after. However, the servant then goes out and finds one of his fellow servants who owes him a much smaller amount, and yet demanded that the debt be paid back immediately. The second servant pleaded with him in the same way. However, the first servant shows no compassion at all completely overlooking his recent near miss. Of course, word gets back to the master and he's angry 
saying, I forgave your debt. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant, just as I had mercy on you? And the servant was delivered to the jailers to be tortured until his debt was paid. This chapter ends by Jesus explaining that this is how my father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. And so it is for us that we receive salvation by the grace of God. But as this parable warns, God expects us to show at least some small portion of that grace to our brothers and sisters. In fact, as we say in the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And so we pray to God to give us grace, that our forgiveness will come from the heart, will overcome conflict, will aid reconciliation and reveal God's love to all. Thank you, Julie. I think um, I remember a, a song by Elton John, Sorry Needs to Be the Hardest. Oh, yeah, to be the I could hardest have sung that yeah, song, You could have I? sung I Sorry Seems to Be the Hardest. That, yeah. But, of course, given what you've said, that would be wrong, wouldn't it? Because, actually, I think you're right. I think forgiveness, I forgive you, I think saying I forgive you is probably the hardest word that we might ever say. And that doesn't have the same ring to it when you're trying to sing it. It doesn't so fit in quite It doesn't, no. I think Elton know. probably chose the right yeah, word. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Where are we today? No idea. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, as children of God, we affirm our faith together as one. Would you please stand? Those who know and love Jesus are called to worship and serve him to break bread, to pray together and to proclaim his good news and serving him before all others, being like him and knowing life in him and with him through our common faith. And so today we share our common faith as we say together. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And so I invite you to sit for our prayers. As we come together this morning, we acknowledge Jesus' love for us as we join our prayers with those of our Saviour, seeking the Father's blessing and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So, Father God, today we give thanks for your creation. We give thanks for the beauty of the world around us. And, Father, we just pray that you will help us to understand that this is your world given to us to look after and to care for. Father, we pray that you will help us to find new ways of looking after this world, to look after all creatures, to look after one another and to look after ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks, Father, for the church that you have given to us. We give thanks for um, Justin, our Archbishop, for Rose, our Bishop. We give thanks for all the clergy and all the laity, everyone who makes up the body of Christ in this world. And we pray particular thanks today for all the clergy within our benefice and on the Isle of Sheppey. And for the clergy within our sister churches on the mainland. And we give particular thanks, Lord, to all the laity, those who come and who do the tasks that are needed those who come simply to be with you in your presence, those who come to share fellowship with one another and lift each other's spirits. Lord, we pray that you will send your Holy Spirit to be with each one of them and each one of us, that we may know your peace and your presence in our hearts and in our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Father, we pray particular thanks for Elizabeth, our Queen, and for that model of leadership through service that she has so shown to so many generations in this country. And Father, we ask that you help us to emulate that, to be those servant leaders. And we pray for leaders of countries, presidents, prime ministers. We pray for leaders of companies. We pray for leaders of churches that they will all seek to uh, recognise that model and to become servant leaders to your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we give thanks for our community gathered here today, both physically and uh, spiritually. We give thanks for uh, the community of the Benefice and for the community of the island. And we pray for everyone within those communities that you watch over them and keep them close in your protection. And we also pray, Lord, for the wider community of your creation. Father, we pray that you will bring peace and comfort to people who need it. That you will help us to find ways to forget about war and to work together in peace and for justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, as we gather together today, we remember before you those who are unwell. We remember all those who are suffering with the effects of COVID, of cancer, of um, all those other illnesses, Lord. And we ask that you send your Holy Spirit to bless them we pray for those with aches and with pains. We pray for all those things that go on behind the scenes. Lord, that you will be there, comforting with your healing touch. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. hear my prayer. And today we also remember uh, loved ones who have gone before us into your kingdom those we have loved, those we have lost, who we know are held safely in your arms. We pray particularly for Bridie. Lord, that you give us assurance that she is safe in your care. We pray for those who have died recently. We pray for Sheila. We pray for those affected by those deaths. And Lord, in just a moment's silence, we remember those on our hearts today before you. Father, for those we know and those we don't, we ask that you hold each one of them in your arm, loving arms. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. In this country, in other countries as well, I'm sure, but in this country, it has always been the thing that when you meet someone, you greet them. Years ago, Mike will remember this, you doffed your top hat. <laughs> Years before that, as Alan will remember, you doffed your bowler hat. More recently, as most of us will remember, you, you bowed or you shook hands and you said, it's lovely to meet you, it's lovely to see you, how the devil are you, and all that sort of stuff, didn't you? But we can't do that. We can't hug one another, we can't shake hands with one another, but we can turn to one another and we can give a nod and we can just say, peace be with you. So as we gather in our homes, we do well to remember that Jesus brings peace into our lives if we open our hearts to him. So let's just stand for the peace. God will speak peace to his people, to those who turn to him in their hearts. Today we pray the peace of Jesus be made known to each one of us, here and at home, as the Holy Spirit dwells in our hearts. Brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. Let us share as best we can that peace with one another.
please do be seated. When we celebrate communion together, either physically or spiritually for those who are at home with one another, we do certain things. The first thing we do is to bring bread, to remember Jesus' body broken for us. We bring wine. Wine to remember his blood, shed for the forgiveness of all our sins, once and for all. And then we bring water. Not because we're running out of wine, but because it reminds us of the Roman spear that pierced Jesus' side, proving that he was dead. Generous God, creator, redeemer, sustainer, we know you have given us work to do, so use us in the service of your world and to the glory of your name as we give thanks and praise. For today, my brothers and sisters, the Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Almighty God, good Father to us all, your face is turned towards your world. In love you gave us Jesus, your Son, to rescue us from sin and death. Your word goes out to call us home to the city where angels sing your praise. And so we join with them in heaven's song. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father of all, we give you thanks for every gift that comes from heaven. To the darkness, Jesus came as your light. With signs of faith and words of hope, he touched untouchables with love and washed the guilty clean. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. The crowds came out to see your son, yet at the end they turned on him. On the night he was betrayed, he came to table with his friends to celebrate the freedom of your people. This is his story. This is our song, Hosanna in the highest. Jesus blessed you, Father, for the food. He took bread, gave thanks, broke it and said, This is my body given for you all. Jesus then gave thanks for the wine. He took the cup, gave it to them and said, This is my blood shed for you all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance. Of me. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Therefore, Father, with this bread and this cup, we celebrate the cross on which he died to set us free. Defying death, he rose again and is alive with you to plead for us and all the world. This is our story. This is our song. Hosanna in the highest. Send your spirit on us now, that by these gifts we may feed on Christ with opened eyes and hearts on fire. May we and all who share this food offer ourselves to live for you and be welcomed at your feast in heaven, where all creation worships you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. And so looking for the coming of God's kingdom, we bring our prayers and praises before him, knowing life and hope exist in Jesus Christ, as we say together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Normally, at this point,
Frankie on Facebook would tell me that the bread looks like a potato. So I've changed it to look like bread. Frankie. Brothers and sisters, Jesus is the Lamb of God who bears our sins and redeems our world. Today, we break this bread to share in the body of Christ, knowing we who are called to his supper are blessed, though we may be separated. For we are one body when we share in the bread of life. In Jesus Christ. Amen. In a moment I will come round with the communion wafers. I will also remember this time to wear my mask, which last time I didn't do. Eternal apologies. Um, if you could please stand.
today as we come together in spiritual communion with our brothers and sisters, not just here, but across the world, we pray together a prayer to remember the bread of life and the blood of sins forgiven once for all as we say together, Jesus, beloved Son and Saviour of all, we believe you are present in the blessed sacrament. We love you above all things and desire you in our souls. Since we now receive you together whilst apart, we welcome you spiritually into our souls and hearts. Knowing you are already there, we embrace you and unite ourselves wholly to you, knowing we shall never be separated from you again. Amen. And so God our guide, you have fed us with bread from heaven as you fed your people Israel. May we who have been spiritually nourished be ready to follow you all our days. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As is often said, it's not church without notices. So, uh, first notice is the, because uh, I haven't got my notice sheet on me, so the first notice is the, um, when it comes up, that one. Uh, 11th of October 2020 is um, <laughs> the pet service. Um, uh, for those of you who may be concerned about the, the new rules and the not meeting in groups of more than six, actually it is an act of worship. We are okay to do it, so please do bring your pets. If you haven't got pets and you've only got teddy bears, like the one I saw up there, please feel free to bring your teddy bears. We will bless your teddy bears. If you haven't got pets and you haven't got teddy bears or any cuddly toy at all but you have got photographs bring them i'll bless the photographs and if you haven't got any of them let me know and i'll print one of one of them off of albert oh he's not up there anymore but albert who you saw just now and you can all have a photograph of albert to bring with you that would be fantastic that's that one um apparently you're not allowed to bring snakes which has upset my daughter because she wanted to bring her snake but we're not allowed to do that so there you go um for those of you at home who aren't here um, at the moment, but uh, are coming to that, because you are, whether you like it or not, please invite your friends. Invite people that you know. Tell them to come along. We will ensure that, we make sh that it is socially distanced. That, I guarantee you, it will be socially distanced. It will be COVID safe, as they say. So feel free to come along to that. Um, the PCC also met to talk about uh, recommencing hospitality. So here's the thing that we would like to do. We would like to begin hospitality again at the end of our services. So we'd like you to bring your cups. Bring your cups with you. Don't give your cups to anyone. You keep your cups with you. And then what we will do is we will arrange for one person to put in tea or coffee and sugar and milk and water. And then you get to go and sit down. And I think at the Abbey we'll probably do that in the hall where we can we can set chairs out and people can sit in small groups to chat but that's what we'd like to do we'd like to do that from october if anyone has any concerns please come and see me and i'll talk it through with you um working party dan that's the 10th of october isn't it so if anyone would like to come and chop trees down and get rid of all that pent up anger at being stuck indoors for Ray. I know that you hated being stuck indoors, so if you want to come along. There's oh. <laughs> always one, it's isn't there? There's always say. one. It's normally Ray as well. Yeah. Or well, Mike. It's normally you. But... Well, it is normally me, <laughs> that's true. Um, so, anyway, yeah, if you want to come along uh, uh, on the 10th of October, uh, we are on the Glebe. We're going to be clearing the trees so people can get to remembrance trees. And just to tidy it up and make it look a bit nicer and a bit easier to maintain so please feel free to come along to that um i'm trying to persuade karen to do bacon sandwiches dan's trying to persuade karen to let him do the bacon sandwiches mainly because dan wants to eat most of the bacon sandwiches himself so uh, don't let dan eat all the bacon sandwiches come along and help us out and then dan will be restricted to one so please feel free to come along to that have i missed anything is there anything i haven't said but i should be saying has anyone got any notices that they think i should be saying i know what i haven't said Hold on, hold on, June, and I'll come back to you, because otherwise I'll forget what I'm going to say. From October, our pattern of worship will be changing slightly, so we will again be back to an 11 o'clock service here and an 11 o'clock service at um, Holy Trinity Queenborough. We're going to alternate our uh, communion services between the two, so you'll see slight changes up here. 
uh, on alternate Sundays. Um, and then from November, for those who are CNS based, from November we're going to go back to reopening services in Holy Trinity CNS as well, unless of course everything goes completely wrong and they ban worship in churches. June. Bereavement. So what you're actually saying to me is you would like me to remind people that the bereavement group will recommence on the second Thursday of October. At what time? It is 10 o'clock. At 10 o'clock. So from 10 o'clock, from the second Thursday in October, I haven't got... What's, what date is that? Second Thursday of October. Second Thursday of October. Oh, second Thursday. It's the 8th, is it? Thank you, Anne. So from the 8th of October... Uh, that's at St Peter's, um, you're more than welcome to come along. Um, uh, are, are you limiting numbers at all? No. So anyone who normally comes along is more than welcome to come along, and anyone who would like to come along for the first time is also welcome to come along. Fantastic. I think that's it. So. May I invite you to stand for God's blessing? May Christ's holy, healing, enabling spirit be with you and guide you on your way at every change and turn in your journey. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love and those whom you don't, this day and always. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we have come to Christ of the living water. We go then in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. And thank you for coming. Everyone needs compassion, a love that's never failed.